Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports. Now this video is coming on the heels of two things. The first is the release of the 12-speed mechanical GRX group set. And then also I have another video out there about uh, best gearing for, um, for, for climbing or for steep hills. And that's gotten some very good reception. So I want to, um, you know, do do a follow up, do something a little bit more uh, current, and then also um, kind of give you my personal take on one by versus two by. So a couple of the things that you hear out there are, uh, you know, one by is lighter than two by. Or, you know, if I ride a one by, I don't have to worry about when to shift my front derailleur and um, and what to do in the back if I'm shifting my front derailleur to the big chain ring or the little chain ring. And then I've got, you know, or what else do you hear? Uh, it's just simpler. It's just easier. It's just one in the front and you don't even have any shift or anything in the front. It's just a brake lever in the back. Uh, is the rear derailleur. Um, so my personal view is apples and oranges, chocolate and vanilla ice cream, you know, you can choose whatever you want. I don't really see a benefit to one by. I'm here to convince you of that, by the way. But I think a two by system just works for most people. And I mean, chain dropping on a front derailleur, it, it, that shouldn't happen. I mean, it should just be adjusted and, and done. And uh, so I, I personally think that a one by system is completely overrated. And I guess I'm here to convince you of that. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the one by drivetrain from Shimano, the GRX drivetrain from Shimano. So you have your crank set and that'll come in either a 40 or a 42 chain ring. So 40 or 42. Now that crank set, they claim weighs in if it's a 172.5, which is kind of right, uh, one of the most common crank sets. They, and a, what is it, a 40 chain ring. They say that that weighs 655. Then you need a cassette in the back. We're just gonna abbreviate that so that it doesn't take longer than it needs to. And that cassette can come in either a 1045 or a 1051. And they claim that those two cassettes weigh 461 and 470 respectively. So crank set, cassette, and then you need a rear derailleur. Front derailleur is not necessary, right? So the rear derailleur um, weighs in at, let's see, around the two, around the 290 range, okay? So 290. Okay, so the common argument is, well, you don't have a front derailleur and you don't have two chain rings on your crank set, so this system is lighter. Well, I kind of did the math on this. The, if you were to choose this crank set, and I will do the math for each one of these, if you got the 1051 setup, 
I'm sorry, the 1045 setup and the 1051 setup, you're going to be at, uh, let's see, 1415 for the group set, and you're going to be at 1406 for the other one. All right? So that's a 1045, 1051. So if someone wants to kind of get a guesstimate of how much this is going to weigh, this is what is published. So I don't have actual weight. Okay. So that's a crank set, cassette, and the rear derailleur that you need. Okay. So we're going to hold on to that for a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the double chain ring setup. And we need a rear derailleur and a front derailleur. So let's add that down here. Front derailleur. Now this crank set will come with a 48, 31, 48 big chain ring, 31 little chain ring. Your cassette options are 11, so not the 10 cog, 1134 or 1136. And those cassettes weigh respectively. Actually, I think I only did the 1036, I'm sorry, the 1136, because it just didn't really matter on the 34 if you're trying to find the largest gear range. So let's get rid of that. And that cassette weighs in at 391. So the fr the front and rear derailleurs, we got to get the weight on those. The RX820 rear derailleur, so let's just call this the 820. That's going to be 270. So remember that other, the rear derailleur for the one by was 290. And now you need a front derailleur, so that's 95. Now, if we take this group set and add it up, sorry, I need to give you the weight for the crank set. The crank set is 721. Again, it's a 172.5 millimeter crank set. So 721 for the crank set, RD, FD, and the cassette. That's going to weigh in at 1477. And if you recall, if you went with the 1151, that was going to be 1415. So I think you can do the math there. That's only 62 grams difference. So for those people that talk about the one by being so much lighter, that's really a non-argument. I mean, 61, 62 grams it's nothing. <laughs> so, okay, let's forget the weight argument because that's really just a push, right? It, it, it doesn't really make that big of a difference to go one by or two by as far as weight. So let's talk about gearing because the other common the other common myth is that, oh, but you get so much more gearing. A much better climbing <coughs> setup and a um, top end gear. All right, well, let's put that to the test. So we're gonna make some assumptions here, and that is that we are riding 700 by 38 millimeter tires. Some ride bigger, some ride smaller. I think
think that's kind of in the middle. You see 44s and 48s out there, and then you see people riding, you know, 35s and 32s and stuff, right, to gravel. So that's your gear range assumption, and we're going to do it at a 50 RPM. You could arguably say that's a pretty steep hill. So if you get your cadence, to, you know, it, you're maxed out in your gearing and your cadence is pretty slow at about 50 cadence, you're probably on a very, on a very steep grade. All right, so let's look at this. And what I did was I said, okay, give me, using a bike a gear inch calculator, give me the speed I would be going with said gearing at 50 RPM. So that's where we're going with this. All right, so remember that you have the option of a 40 by 45, a 40 by 51, right? Then you also have the 42 by 45 and the 42 by 51. And then you have the 31 by 34, remember that 1134 cassette, and then a 31 by 36. So I'm going to plug this in real quick just to show you that these are the miles per hour for each one of these. And this is the winning one, as in it gives you the most uh, gearing, because obviously the slower you're going and you're still holding 50 cadence, the easier that gear is supposed to be. But I want to show you something because, again, it's just such a myth. Oop, sorry, that's a two. Your best and easiest gearing with your 1051, or I should say with your one by, is a 1051 with your 40, so a smaller chain ring, than your 42. And at 50 cadence on something super steep, you're still pedaling at 3.19 MPH, uh, MP miles per hour. You guys can do the conversion for uh, kilometers. All right, so here we are. 352 is the max gearing on a two by. Now everyone can at some point add a cassette or do something to their uh, gearing option that is not official by Shimano. So I, I'm just giving you the Shimano componentry and what they recommend you use. I know that people can go out there and also, I mean, even on my road frames, my Richie Logic road frame, even though the derailleur's maxed out at, I don't know, 30, I'm sorry, like 28 or something like that. I can put a 34 back there, no problem with a, a standard Durace road derailleur. So just know that this is nominal. This is what is recommended by Shimano. Anyway, so 3136, smallest chain ring, so smaller than the two that are offered as a one by, and a 36 large, large uh, cog in the back you're only going to be 0.33 of a mile, a third of a mile difference. So we've already dispelled the myth that the one by is lighter. Oh my God, it isn't. It's just 62 grams. Now we're dispelling the myth that the one by has better gearing because you have a 51. <laughs> I mean, a 51 is huge. It's bigger than a, than a compact chain ring. So... Uh, which is normally a 50. So, again, another myth I believe is busted. It's only a difference of 0.3 miles per hour between a 3136 
and a 4051. All right, so that is the climbing gearing. Now let's talk about top end speed. All right, so on the top end speed, and you know, it depends, obviously it always depends on how fast someone wants to ride, right? So you don't have to um, be a speed demon, but if you choose to, so now 700 by 38, same tire, but I switch this up to a 95 RPM. As a fixed gear rider, I actually rode my fixed gear on Saturday, today's uh, Tuesday. Was it Saturday? No, uh, well, Sunday. Sunday on my birthday, September 10th. I rode my fixed gear, so I got my cadence up to like 133 on a hill and had to hold that just to get down the hill without, you know, spinning out and bouncing all over the place. All right, so let's talk about top end speed because you have a 40 by 10, 42 by 10, or a 31, I'm sorry, 48, sorry, 48 by 11. Remember your two choices for your one by are either a 40 or a 42 chain ring. And then your smallest cog in the cassette is a 10. And then for the two by, it's a 4831. So there's your big chain ring, it's a 48. And you're using an 11 cog, uh, 11 type of cassette, 11 to 36. All right, at 95 cadence, you are doing 31.07, 42.10 is 32.62, and a 48 by 11 is 33.86. So your top end speed is better with the two by, right? Now, it depends on where you ride. We have a lot of hills here in San Diego. And if you're on a very flat course, you may never even get to these 30 mile per hour speeds because maybe being a flat course, being out in the open, <laughs> chances are you got a headwind. So you may, even, may never even get to these speeds. But here in San Diego, if you come out and do BWR, Belgian Waffle Ride, we've got a lot of hills and a lot of downhills. And if the people in your group that you were climbing with now go down the other side and you're a light rider, because if you're a heavy rider, gravity's going to help you, but you're a light rider, you need the big gearing to stay with those other folks. Um, I mean, it's nothing here to get over 60 miles per hour on a, on a downhill. Well. I should say, nothing unusual to go over 50. You can go over 60 as well. But not, not unusual at all, 40, 45, 50 miles per hour down in a downhill in this area. At some point, you will spin out, but you have to stay attached as you go up and over with that group. Then once everyone hits terminal velocity, then okay, now it's an aerodynamic thing. Can you draft and kind of stay in that group? Right. All right. So 33.86. So we've dispelled three myths so far. One, that one by is so much lighter. It isn't. I think it was 62 grams, right? We've dispelled the, the fact that you get just such wider gearing. No, you only gain 0.3 mile, 0.33 miles per hour on the steepest of grades. Pretty much af below three miles per hour, you're walking. <laughs> it, I mean, it, you're just walking because if the hill is that steep, dirt, loose, sand, rocky, you're not gonna be able to keep overcoming these obstacles at below three miles per hour. So you're walking anyway. So it's not that much lighter. 
you don't get all that great gear ratio that they keep talking about and your top end speed is still better with your two by crank set so I just don't get it I don't get why people think that a one by is a better drivetrain we're gonna cover one last thing now your cassette options are 1045 1051 and we're just going to talk about 1136 for now okay um, actually I need a little bit more space now stick with me on this one please 1051 and then 1136 on the 1045 you're going to get and excuse my back every time I have to write this 10 12 14 16 18 21 24 28 I should have written smaller <laughs> 28 let's do that again we'll try to squeeze it in a little bit more because it is important to show you this gearing 10 12 14 16 18 21 24 28 32 36 40 and 45 1051 you get a 10 12 14 16 18 21 24 28 33 39 45 and 51 and then if you are using a 36 You ever try to use a trackpad upside down it's very difficult <laughs> so that's why there's so much delay uh, 1136 11 12 13 14 15 you see what's going on so far All right 15 17 19 21 24 28 32 and 36 all right so if you have a 1045 that's your gearing 1051 and then 1136 the reason I took the time to write this out is because this is another reason why I do not like one by and before I forget anytime I do a tune-up on a bike here with a one by system if I'm in the, the largest cog a 45 or a 51 the amount of effort that I'm pushing on that crank arm I, I just there's got to be drive drive train friction loss of power there it's just so hard to pedal it in the stand all right anyway so let's do this real quick because it is two 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 uh, so that's and then three three and then one two three four and then five and then this one is one two three four three and three and then four five six 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 and then the last one 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 two 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 
three, four, four, four. What do all these numbers mean? What this means is between each one of these cogs, it's two steps or two teeth. Two teeth, two. So two, 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 three, three, four, 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 and then five. If you're someone who is trying to find the right cadence on a hill or on the flats, this gearing here, not to mention that the 10 cog has been, you know, Shimano, I guess, followed suit with SRAM, which was first, and then Campagnolo was second. With this 10 tooth cog, there's supposed to be a lot more friction, but I, I don't know, it's a couple of horse, a um, couple of watts. But anyway, each one, each time you shift, it's going to be two teeth difference here, then 18 to 21, three, 21 to 24, three, and then it starts skipping by four teeth each cog, 24, 28, 32, 36, and then the last one is a five tooth jump. We used to call those bailout gears. <laughs> if you're looking at a 10, 51, the steps are two, 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 three, three, four, and then it starts skipping by five and six. So if you shift one gear to the next in these last one, two, three, four cogs, it's either a five tooth jump or a six tooth jump. That's ridiculous. What if you had a two by drivetrain with an 1136 cassette. Your spacing between the cogs would be from 11 to 12, 1, 13, 4. So you'd have a straight block from 15 to 11. So each gear is, is sequential. It's the perfect gear each time. So 1, 1, 1, 1. Between 15 and 17 is 2, 17, 19, 2, 19, 21, 2. Then it's only 1 by 3, and then the last four. I'm sorry, the last three are four tooth jumps. So I would rather have a four tooth jump than a six tooth jump. Or even a, a five tooth jump. So I just don't understand why everyone is so adamant. And, and, and SRAM has been trying to get rid of their front derailleur for a long time. And honestly, it's because SRAM front derail front derailleur mechanical shifting is horrible. It's terrible. And anyone who rides a SRAM mechanical road bike or any type of bike that has a front derailleur, they know it. You may tell all your friends that your group sets the lightest. You may tell all your friends that your bike is, you know, really light at Starbucks. But your front derailleur on a mechanical S, uh, SRAM system is just terrible. So, SRAM's been trying to get rid of that front derailleur for a long time. They've been trying to do it on road, mountain, gravel, right? So they've gotten rid of it. So now here you are. But to get rid of that front derailleur, you need to get a lot more gearing somewhere else because you now you know you no longer have the option to go to a smaller chain ring. You're stuck with either a 40 or a 42 which is not a small chain ring, by the way. And um, yeah, just doesn't make sense. So now to make up for that gearing that you don't have a small chain ring, you have to go with these large, large cogs, right? 36, 40, 45, or in this case, 39, 45, 51. The 1136 gives you nice sequential gearing. You're not skipping much. And it's not until the final, um, let's see, the 30, the 28, 32, 36, the final three cogs, 28, 32, and 36, that you skip by four. Again, I truly think a, f a front derailleur, a two-by drivetrain, makes the most sense. 
That's my opinion. What's yours? Please like and subscribe. Please share this video with folks that are thinking about one by, two by, what should I do? Should I use this? Should I do that? And remember what I said. Some people have been able to hack this um, drivetrain setup so that they could get a larger cassette back here. So now you got the best of both worlds. Got a little bit larger cassette, so you're going to make up that difference on that 40. 51 drivetrain that I showed you earlier and you still got your top end speed so I don't know please like and subscribe if you like this kind of content please put smiley face down in the comments section so I know that you stuck with me to the end and also please share this with it's your friends it's 3 p.m. I got some appointments coming so I got to hurry up and get this done please Give me your feedback and tell me what you think or what has been your experience with one buy. Well, anyway, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you up the road.